Today, we're actually going to get a season finale. And the season finale is supposed to wrap up season the plunder. Um, there's some there's some words going around right now that this is the worst season. Uh, I do wonder, is this the worst season of Bungie? I, I want us to get a poll right now. And hold on, hold on. Worst season ever. We I want us to put season of plunder, season of gambits, which what was the actual name of it? Season of the hunting, Joker's wild cross. All right, all right. So all right, give me give me season, give me all the worst seasons right now, and let us take a vote. Vote on the one that was the most shite. Okay, word the undying hunt and plunder. Worst season in terms of what? In terms of just bad. You know what I mean? It's like a it's like imagine if we had piles of shit. This is the sniff test, all right? Which one of them makes you instantly hurl? There's somebody right now that's like, please don't pick. Somebody at Bungie right now specifically worked on the season we're about to vote on. And they're like, please don't pick my season. Please don't pick my season. All right, all right. Worst season poll is up right now, everybody. Everyone take your votes. All right, season the worthy got voted the worst season ever. Damn, Jesus. Was it that bad? Was season the worthy really that bad? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Season of the Worthy. Let's just go back in time real quick. All right, Season of the Worthy is the 10th season of Destiny 2 and the third seasonal content of Shadowkeep. It started from March 10, 2020, ending in June 9, 2020. The season focused on Guardians working with Commanders of Vala and Anastasia Bray to, 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 what is this? Rearm the Warmind Rasputin and prevent the derelict Almighty from crashing into the last city. It also features the return of the Trials of Osiris activity and featuring Saint-14 as a defender. All right, so, all right. Almighty obviously ended up crashing into Earth, but not into the last city. Yay. Who freaking cares, by the way? I wish the Almighty did crash. I wish it would have just straight up T-boned the piss out of the last city. You know how amazing that would have been? We would have had a front row seat to watching the last city get decimated. We could have literally saw everyone below us. A Link sneak. Gar probably not Guardians, because we just come back. But all the, like, all the mortal people. You know what I'm saying? Like the peasants. Like, it, it would have been a beautiful sight to behold. But Bungie ended up pushing the Almighty out. I thought it was a cool event, though. Let me just say this. I thought it was a cool event. Watching the, watching the Almighty crater pass. I do wonder if there was, a, like, a cabal on the Almighty going, Left! Turn left! Anyways, uh, I would say what was the biggest letdown of that season was um, Trials of Osiris Returns Season of the Worthy. I mean, this was this was bad. This was so bad. Hold on, let's just watch this again. High stakes activity. And right now, we are missing that. And I know we're missing it. I know we are missing it. We are going to fix it. Yeah, baby. The trailer was hyped, though. You know it. Charles is back, and it's pretty insane. Oh, he's super. When we knew that Charles was coming back, the most important thing from us was to do it right. And so that means it's it's taken us a little while. Every single life, every single round, every single match means something in Trials, whether you win or lose. Fight, win, fight again. This is your duty. When you've got the best players in an arena and it's power enabled, the stakes are incredibly high. It is a legitimate, difficult thing to be good at. With the reintroduction of Trials of Osiris, we are really taking a look at our whole sandbox and saying like, okay, what is the right balance of things? We want to make sure that we really stick the landing with Trials. It's important that this doesn't go out half-baked. We are in the playtest lab every day playing Trials, trying to get it just right. We've been working to balance uh, you know, the abilities, the subclasses, the weapons, the armor, to make sure it is as fun and as fair as possible. We've done a lot because it's important. Spare branches. We're bringing back some amazing maps from Destiny 1. Some of my favorites, personally. Cauldron, Exodus Blue, and Anomaly. 
Some of the coolest armor and weapons from Destiny 1, in my opinion, were the Trial's original gear set, and that's coming back. And when players go flawless, those armor pieces and weapons will react in a certain way. When you see someone in the tower, everybody's gonna know. Everyone's gonna know that they went flawless that week. It's just so cool to have like a pinnacle <laughs> PvP activity return. We're hearing it from the players, we feel it ourselves, and I can't wait to bring back a version of Trials that matches what we remember from back in Destiny 1. Go. You make me proud. All right, so you guys voted that this was the worst season of Destiny ever. Now, let me let me be clear. Narratively, I didn't think it was a bad season. You know, we got to see Rasputin, Almighty event came out, and I know nobody really liked the Almighty event because everybody had to sit at the tower for hours and hours. But listen, I had a good time watching it, okay? I actually love the live events. And when the darkness actually came and, like, ate the other planets, I know it was part of sunsetting and everyone hates sunsetting, but other than that, it was cool. The live events were pretty cool. With that being said, the reason why this season was received so poorly was because trials of osiris was just terrible and it was terrible because a we didn't have a paywall and cheaters were rampant and look say what you want about the sandbox the sandbox has always been a wild card because it just changes man you're never gonna have the perfect sandbox uh, i think 30th anniversary event got close to that but dude cheaters were terrible and there was a floodgate of cheaters into this game primarily because we just moved from battle.net to steam we didn't really, even though Bungie said we had an anti-cheat, let's be real. It, it, if it was an anti-cheat, cheat, it, it didn't do shite, okay? With there not being a paywall, literally had no downside. The moment they had an account ban, they just made another account and right back into the game, they're going. Oh, and it was also free to play. Yeah, again, that's access to the no, the no paywall, but Bungie having access for, for free to play. And if you remember, you had your your trial streamers that were, you know, obviously doing carries, but then you also had a ton of people doing uh, recoveries, and and then it got streamlined by these websites of doing recoveries. And obviously, the most efficient way to get someone flawless was, hey, get your boys, All right? Hey, hey, everybody, activate wall hacks and aim bots. Fuck yeah. Okay, now we're all gonna go flawless together. You know, $49.99, boom, you, you can get your character flawless, no problem. We'll have it done in 25 minutes. Um, and it was a good chance anti-cheat will never, ever touch your account. Long story short, though, it got so bad, I know that we ended up quitting trials. So anyways, season the worthy. I, I, I guess I can agree on that, that it was one of the worst seasons ever. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.